Now I'm going to show you how to fill in a big space like this chicken here. Before I learned how to paint proper with the right, you know, brushes and the right methods, and I'd watch my mother when I'd try to teach her, and she'd be like, going on the edge like that, and a whole bunch of little bitty strokes, you know, and be kind of choppy, which, you know, it wouldn't matter with the chicken, but still, why not use a big brush that you've got loaded up, and then you can take it, and you can fill in this huge big spot right here, see? You can get on the chisel, and do these little feather strokes like this. But what you want to do is see is you want to follow the corner of the brush. Let that be your guideline and just swoop down. I can keep this straight. Hold on. You want to keep this corner right along and just kind of let it glide down and keep a smooth line. And fill this chicken in. You know, or whatever shape it is you're doing. It could be a birdhouse, it could be a cow, it could be a side of a barn. Fill that baby in, see? This is a soft grip 3 8 inch series 190 very long angular brush. I was told it was for ribbons. Let me see here. Yeah, I guess it could be ribbons. If you wanted to make ribbons. I'm not real crazy about making ribbons with it. I've done it before and I thought it was really pretty cool. But here's what I do with it. I was trying to make chicken feet. And a painful and quick little step here. When I wanted to do a chicken floor cloth. So I just did this. One, two, three. You want to get them right one, two, three. Make the one in the middle longer. That's a chicken foot. If you'll get your paint thinner and really creamy, they'll come out to be perfect little chicken feet. Sort of a, like a polywog stroke, but with a different kind of brush. Now I'm going to show you to use a floating medium with your a side loading so you can shade good. And I'm going to use this angular brush. It works really good. And you're going to double load it with your gel uh, floating medium. And work it in real good. You don't want that paint to travel across to the edge where it needs to be clear. So you want to kind of, you can just pinch it off like that. If it gets across, but you want to mash on your palette. See how I'm mashing it away? Now I'm going to shade this birdhouse. If it looks a little heavy, I'm going to wipe it off of my palette some more to get it. I want a nice, soft little blend right there. And that's how you're shading. How you shade anything if you want to put shadow. It's a blended edge, not a, a harsh line. So you can kind of work. It doesn't have to be in one stroke. It can be worked in and you can, if it gets too heavy, you just wipe it off. Come back here, straighten it up a little bit, see? But the angular brush works good because you can see where the color is. I'm using a long, sort of a more fat, round, it's not really a round brush, it's more like for lettering. And I'm going to finish this out with a roof. I'll go back and shade that later, but I just want to do some little lines and show you how to do to get this birdhouse up on a, a stand. Um, we'll make a little topiary out of it. So I'll put this little branch. It needs to be kind of like a branch, so it just needs to be crooked and everything. And now I'm going to do this little crooked branch going down. And then do another one going across so the birds can have something to perch on. Okay. Now I'm going to do my brush real thin with paint and with water. 
And let's see, if I get up on the tip real good, I'm going to do some little vines in and out. You can use a smaller brush for this, but I really like the way this one handles. It holds paint good and it's, it's easy to control. Put some more up, some little vines and let, it, let them scatter around. I switched to a 595 series script liner that has just got a little smaller tip. And I'm going to put some little branches up here, some little vines up on the roof. Weave in and out. This is kind of a thin paint because I want to be able to make little scrollies. It's still not fine enough. Now I'm using my little 5 op detailer again and I'm going to put all those little lines in the siding of the birdhouse like that. Start at the top and pull down just long little shadow lines a little, to make it look like wood. Real thin little skinny lines. I'm getting my hand in the fences. That, you get the idea here. Just want to put some little lines in the So You have to do your shading and your highlighting first and then go back and put your little details on. Okay, y'all have got to find a brush like this. This is the skinniest little, flattest, cutest little brush you've, you've ever seen. You can make the tiniest little bitty checkerboards with this if you wanted to. It's actually a lettering brush, but soft, Royal Soft Fruit doesn't make one this small. It's a quarter inch. But look how great little flowers you can make with this. Little tiny, you know, just perfect little five petals if you want. You can set it down any way and it comes out right. But see, like if you want to do sit down leaves with this brush, this would be perfect. Check with me on my website or email me to find out exactly where you can get this brush. It's just a must-have.